How many have watched CSI, Crime Scene Investigation? Well, today we're going to talk about cow side investigation. There are two parts that we're going to talk about today, milking equipment and the milkability. These factors that influence milkability, uh, some are related to and controlled by the equipment and some are controlled by the milking personnel. Quality milk production performance begins with milking equipment working correctly. Many dairies use hired labor, so it's up to management to make sure the equipment is functioning correctly. We will go over several equipment issues that affect milkability. The first one is liners. If you look at the picture here, you can see I've got, I've actually put some arrows here. These particular liners and shells affect milkability. If you notice this in this picture here, there is a mark on the mouthpiece of the liner, there is a mark on the milk tube of the liner. They must be straight up and down in order to melt those cows out correctly. If there's a twist in that liner, it will affect the milkability, and we cannot milk out these quarters evenly. If you have that type of milking equipment, shells, and liners, it's very important that we carefully pull the milking unit out of the jetter assembly after the CIP cleaning so we do not twist them. It's very important that we teach the milking technicians and show them the, the marks of these things and make sure they check these liners daily to avoid uh, problems with milkability. Another very important part of the equipment is these pinch valves that shut off the equipment when the cow is done. These get worn over time and needs to be replaced. When the hoses are worn and or there's holes in some of the, these uh, air tubes, this will affect milkability, this will affect the flow rates to and from the meter. So these things over time will fatigue and the walls will start to collapse. So it's very important that we change these on a regular basis. Supporting the milking unit squarely with the base of the udder is very important when it comes to milking out the cows correctly. If the teat cups are not correctly and squarely based with the teats, this will result in uneven milking. Some of these larger milk hoses we see here, if they're not, if not supporting the claw, will milk from one side to the other. If the, the radial arm supports are, are not correctly or not long enough, we create a slug of milk here. And this will again, will affect the milkability and will affect the, the end of milking units uh, so that we'll, the takeoff will not come off at its correct detaching settings. So it's important that we support the, the claw. Anytime we have a, create a slug, we affect the backing of the teat end which will increase milking times and will actually increase teat end damage. So it's very important that we have these hoses and support arms correctly so the milk goes away from the cow and down through the milking uh, meter and detacher. You notice here that these bigger hoses, some of these are now bigger, we make sure we have to support that claw squarely. If in this case here, that's, this, is going to be milk, this quarter is going to be milked out unevenly because we're not squarely with the base of the other. We need to have a good support arm to support that claw squarely with the base of the other. Here's some different uh, supposed supports to help support that claw squarely with the base of the other. Here's one on a rotary part that was a guy developed. Very simple to operate. It's air operated so a second before that unit uh, ready to detaches, that arm drops off out of the way as you see here and the unit detaches. Very easy to uh, milk these cows and support this claw on this rotary parlor. Again, time is important and, and keeping it simple is very important when it comes to that. The bigger the rock, the harder the milker. If we look at where we see this gentleman machine stripping, we are creating bad habits for the cows. We do not have to weight the claws and have to milk these cows up correctly. So it's a, it's a habit that we get into and we teach those cows then to have it. What we end up by machine stripping and over milking, we end up with, with teat ends that look like this, hyperkeratosis. Uh, the more teat end damage, the greater risk of, of mastitis and the greater risk of increasing your somatic cell. Rough and cracked teats uh, also increase the surface area for bacteria to hide. Uh, it makes it more difficult for the milking technicians to clean the teats at milking time. So we want to, our goal is to have these teats nice and soft like baby bottoms. Uh, so they're smooth, less places, uh, good teat end protein. Another very important part of, of the milking system here and is we talk about the, the detachers. Many dairymen have automatic detachers with or without meters. Do you know the end milk settings on your detachers? Do you know the delays? 
With an ex excellent milking routine in place, we can set the detachers to milk wetter, uh, shorten the delays, and reduce milking time, which reduces teat end stress. You look at this end of milking report from Dairy Comp 305. This particular dairy is set at a three pounds of flow with a two second delay on this meter detachers. You look at his flow rates on 652 cows. The average unit on time is three and a half minutes and the average flow rate is 9.3 pounds per milk. They're getting 31 pounds of milk three times a day. So if you look at the flow rates here, we want to see the flow rates continually go up as we do here. And, it, and again, peak flow rates is over 10 pounds of milk. 63% of the milk is harvested the very first two minutes. This is an excellent milking routine. I get called to this dairy here because they're having issues with somatic cells, sand stalls, somatic cells over, over 200,000, 10% of their cows in the hospital. When I evaluated the milking routine, people are doing an excellent job prepping the cows. So what happened here is I watched the milk, they had the artificial stimulation turn on called stimmy pulse. The very first thing we did is we turned off the stimmy pulse and then we, uh, over a period of a week or two, we started to set the milking units to milk wetter. End results is we went from 200,000 down to 137. We gained six pounds of milk. And how did we do that? Because we have went from eight hours milking to seven hours milking three times a day. That's three hours a day. Those cows can be eating and laying down more milk. That's 2,400 pounds of milk. But that's not the end of the story. We now have them where we're over 450 cows. We have less than 100,000 somatic cells. Our milk production is up to 94 pounds, but again, it's over eight hours milking because of the increased milk production. What happened? Well, if you look really closely, we had gained 50 cows. We are not culling cows because of mastitis. So again, we are gonna be able to sell cows instead of culling for mastitis. That equates to more than 7,200 pounds of milk per day. Same equipment, same people. The only thing we did is we tweaked the milking equipment to milk wetter and shut off the semi pumps. So let's review this. Cow consistency begins with taking a look, making sure our equipment is properly working, perform scheduled maintenance on your equipment, check liners if you have that particular style as well as older liners. Very, very important part is to make sure we're milking cow out correctly, make sure the unit is squarely with the base of the other. Make sure we replace and repair some of the old worn out parts of the thing and make sure we follow up with an excellent milking routine so we can adjust the end of milk settings to milk wetter, shortening the delay, which means the cows can eat and lay down more time and spend less time in the holding area. Thank you.